Welcome to another episode of Jay Leno's Garage. Uh, today we're going to be talking about my 1991 Cyclone pickup. Uh, bought this brand new back in 1991. Uh, limited production vehicle. They only built 3,000, well, they built 200 and 2,900, 998 of these. And it was a one year only, just 1991. They built three in 1992. But uh, the reason I got it was this. Faster than a Ferrari. There you go right there, look at that. But this little pickup truck was the fastest accelerating vehicle you could buy in 1991. Faster than Corvette, faster than Ferrari 348, faster than the Testarossa. I, it's hard to believe. This has a V6 engine, it's turbocharged. A lot of people think it's the engine out of the uh, Buick Grand National. That was 3.8 liter. This is 4.3, this is a Vortex motor. The Grand National had an, uh, this has a, a, a liquid cooled intercooler. The uh, Grand National had air intercooler. So this was quite a bit faster and with four wheel drive, it uh, hooked up pretty quick. But that shows you how things were back in 1991 that a pickup truck was the fastest accelerating vehicle you could buy. Zero to 60 in I think 4.6, 4.2, give or take, whatever it is. Uh, they were 280 horsepower from the factory. Everyone seems to think it was closer to 330 horsepower, but for insurance reasons, they built it at 280, much like they did with the early Hemis that were rated at 425. They're actually quite a bit more than that. Um, it's kind of an interesting vehicle because it's, too light for heavy work and too heavy for light work, so it's more like a sports car pickup truck. They don't recommend you carry more than 500 pounds in the bed. You've only got 37% of your weight over the rear wheel of the car, over the rear of the car. You've got disc brakes in front, drums in back. Uh, you really need discs in back because the front, the, 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 uh, the disc did all the work up in front with only 37% of the weight back here. They didn't work very hard anyway. Uh, Obviously automatic transmission, um, kind of 90s velour kind of seats. These sold for about $25,000, $26,000. Doesn't sound like much today, but 1991, that was, uh, that was quite a bit of money. Uh, and I, as I said, they only built 2,998 of these. But it's amazing how many cars I've surprised at stoplights with this thing. Because as I say, <laughs> that four wheel drive, it just hooks right up. In fact, there's a, I read about guys that have modified these and run high nine seconds on the street with them. So it's, it's pretty amazing. It was, uh, it's not really a truck. It's more like a truck sports car. If you think of it as a sports car, we can carry a ton of stuff in the back. I would carry mostly, as I said, maybe bags of feathers because you can't really put a lot of weight back there. And it has air conditioning and everything like that. It's not, it's not a stripper by any sense. Uh, they also sold this as the Typhoon. Now the Typhoon was basically the Cyclone, but with what they called the Jimmy body on it, you know, four seats, the whole deal. You know, that was, that was the more practical one. So uh, they sold, oh, many, five, ten thousand 10,000 of those. They sold quite a few of those. But this was the one that was lighter. This is about 3,500 pounds. The uh, Typhoon was about 37, 3,800 pounds. This, of course, was just a two-seater. The Typhoon could seat four or five in a pinch if you had to. Uh, I just see big beefy tires on it. Uh, the wheels kind of mimic the Corvette wheels of the period. Coefficient of drag is like something, it's just a brick. It's just a brick going through the air. This is uh, not, not particularly aerodynamic at all. But Taya, let's take a look inside the vehicle. Now you got electric windows, electric door locks. Still got to adjust your mirror by hand. Um, it's a little tight in here, but not bad. I mean, actually, for the period, it was pretty good. Uh, can't complain about that. Very plasticky, but most American cars were back in 91. AM, hey, FM radio, premium sound system, and all that boost gauge, all that kind of stuff. But uh, they have a nice sound to them. You got ABS and... Uh, all that kind of stuff. Anti-lock brakes. A lot of this furry stuff all over the place. I never quite understand. GM must have had a run on, uh, somebody must have given them a bunch of fur and they just seem to have put it all in all these cars. This vehicle not intended for off-road use. Uh, a lot of guys went racing with these things and they were pretty quick. And I think this one's a little quicker than stock because it has a few factory tricks on it, but well, 
we'll deal with that another time. I put the line of bed liner in it and a few other things. And this is an option you could get. Box up just like that. Seal the bed. It's uh, I've had a lot of fun with this thing. As I said, it was my everyday car for years and years. So it got a little dented. A lady bumped me in the back here, pushed that bumper in a little bit. I didn't do anything about it. It's fine with me. So uh, let's see how she does. I must say I've had this thing now over 20 years, and it's pretty bulletproof. All I've done really is just change the oil on it and you know, do brake pads, things like that, but uh, it's been pretty reliable. You know, the Buick Grand National got all the publicity, uh, but I think this is actually faster. These were built down in Shreveport, Louisiana. I love that part of the country. It's a lot of fun when you go down there. And uh, a company named, I think, PSA, something like that, did the, uh, actually built them for GM, and then they went out of business, and that's why they didn't build anymore. Plus, the Typhoon was really more practical. You could carry more people in it. Uh, there's no airbag. This is the last, I guess, airbag came in about, what, 95, 96. That was mandatory. So consequently, it's a fairly light vehicle. And with the four-wheel drive, she hooks up very nicely. And it's a good-looking truck. Most people have no idea what it is. And they're so surprised when you blow their doors off. Now, although this was faster than any Ferrari you could buy in America, that was an acceleration, not top speed. These were limited or governed to 126 miles an hour. I think Ferrari had a top speed of 166 back then, but it shows you what a difference 20 years can make. 166 was just considered pretty crazy back in the day. Now, of course, supercars go well over 200 miles an hour. But uh, the 90s, the late 80s, early 90s, these were not a good time for, uh, for fast cars. In fact, my Bentley Turbo R, which is an 89 that was uh, the fastest four-door sedan you could buy in America. And this was the fastest truck you could buy in America. You see a theme here? We like the fast stuff. But imagine going into a Chevy dealer in 91 and going, what's the fastest thing you got, the Corvette? Uh, no, the uh, little truck over there with the V6. Really? Now this particular truck was a test bed for GM. Uh, they did a few performance modifications on it. Had different wheels on it when I got it from GM. I put the stock wheels back on it. I think it's got a little more horsepower than stock. I had the president of General Motors here at the garage recently. He noticed some markings on it. He says, hey, how'd you get that? I go, eh, before your time. <laughs> the fun thing about this, uh, little pickup is how compact it is. Most pickup trucks, especially now, are just huge things. Ford F-250s, F-150s, God, they're enormous. The new big Chevys, whereas this thing, it's, I guess sports truck is the best term. And it handles okay. There's only so much you can do with a live axle. Red line in this motor is not very high. It's about 4,700 RPM, and that's where it shifts. You can get a little bit more out of it if you want, but it, it doesn't do you that much good. You know, this truck's a classic example. I've always said that the real fun with most cars is between 20 and 120 miles an hour. Once you get over 120, especially in public roads, it gets crazy. But the real fun is that acceleration between 20 and maybe 70 or 75. And that's why this one's got some real punch. And it does it all fairly quietly and discreetly. You know, you've got these big tires on it, so there's not a lot of tire squeal. You just kind of torque brake it a little bit, bring the revs up and drop the hammer and she goes. All things considered, it's a great vehicle to drive. You know, you sit up high, nice big windshield, A pillars aren't too thick, there's not a lot of blind spots, good mirrors, uh, and it's uh, 
It's fun. Then you get down to the age old question, will it do a burnout? No, not really, because with these big tires and four wheel drive, you really can. But you can blow off a Ferrari, and that should be good enough for anybody. And we'll uh, see you next week. Oh, look, a Ferrari. Mm-hmm. <laughs>